Hi, this is Matt. I'm somewhere in Tokyo. The topic of this video is statistics. So uh, I had a chance to uh, look into the statistics while um, uh, studying for the FRM. And the thing with statistics that they use a little bit everywhere, especially when it comes to surveys. The thing with surveys is that it's, um, it's one of the uh, only way to, you know, when you go to find out about something uh, in science, you actually do, uh, I have to move around because there are things happening behind me. So, there are several ways you can find out about things. You can uh, observe directly, or you can, um, you know, we, we always have limited uh, observation tools. And um, one tool is simply taking a large sample of population, modifying a parameter, and then checking, checking the result. For instance, you give um, you give people berries in the morning and then you check if it has an impact on uh, their focus. So you take um, 1,000 people or 10,000 people, the larger the sample, the better your results. And then you check the uh, you check if uh, eating berries has an impact. Now this is a really, um, it's not, it's, we're doing that because we, we've got no other better observation tool because it's quite broad. I mean, if, if you could actually just directly observe the impact on uh, berries on people, on one individual as opposed to a population, you would do it, but we don't have this, this we can't do that. So what we have to do is that we um, take this, uh, yeah, we, we use a, a large sample of population. We can't do that, nothing else we can do. Um, so what we do, do we, uh, we, we measure, uh, okay, there's, there's a lot of things behind, I'm going to move around, okay. So my point is that uh, surveys are a very weak observation tool, especially when it comes to things like nutrition. Uh, right now I'm in front of um, Toranomon Station, by the way, which is uh, some sort of small Pokemon. It's like a cousin of the Pokemon. So surveys, um, so what do you do? You use uh, statistics and um, mathematic tools to work something out from that. So the, the main tool is uh, um, regression analysis and the method of method of uh, ordinary least squares uh, and the the objective of that um, tool is actually in itself it's quite weak because the only thing you're going to be able to prove with that is that there is a linear correlation between two parameters for instance between the amount of berries you eat in the morning and your focus or between the amount of brazil nuts uh, that you eat and your erections something like that so it's really um, well, the, 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 the objective itself is not great. It's a linear correlation. Now, linear. So what if the correlation is actually non-linear, but you won't be able to pick it up? What if uh, you actually might manage to prove that there is a linear correlation? Well, a correlation is uh, it's not causation. So it's not because uh, most people who eat berries have better focus that berries improve focus. It's, it's not, it's not, there is no... Um, it's not a proof, it's, it's, it's a hint towards that, but it's not a proof. So, so the, 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 the objective is weak. And then, it's not just that, it's actually when you see, when you look at the scatter plot of the data, so you, imagine you manage to, uh, you find a big sample of 10,000 people, you um, they make, give them berries to eat for um, months and years, you gather your data, you've got a big scatter plot of data on a graph between the amount of berries and the uh, improved focus. And then it look, looks like a big cloud. When you have a look at it, you think, oh, okay, um, is there a trend there? It's, you don't really, it's not clear when you look at the cloud, really. So you have to use this wonderful method, which is the uh, regression analysis, where you get, oh, you're gonna come up with a magic line that's gonna go through your little cloud and give, you know, signal out of notes. Um, the, the meaning appears and then you can see a trend appearing between uh, increasing the uh, lot of berries uh, that people eat and um, their focus. Of course, there, so it's, it's really uh, it's a bit dodgy, but there are, uh, there are tools to actually um, confirm whether it's really dodgy or not. So we use the R2, which is a way to um, give the um, reliability of that uh, linear uh, relationship. So the R2, um, the closer it is to one, the better it is. But then, 
but then that's if people actually are careful and apply uh, the statistical method rigorously. Which, which, which you not even know. But let's, let's imagine, let's, uh, let's actually, uh, let's assume that people are careful and they do, um, they, they really apply uh, statistical methods uh, rigorously, okay? So now they're gonna come up with a, a confidence level. So they're gonna say, okay, uh, we managed to prove that there is a linear uh, correlation between those two parameters at a 99% confidence level. So 99%, that sounds, that sounds quite good. I mean, on paper, that sounds good. That means there is just a 1% chance that this linear correlation you found is actually just the, hello, hi, hi, hello. <laughs> How are you? Wait, okay, come, come here, come here. No, 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 this is a... This is <laughs> You're so crazy. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, okay. I was doing a video about statistics. Alright. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop now because uh, my friend is very shy, so right. she doesn't want to be in front of the video. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop it. Talk to you later. To finish up with this thing with confidence levels, now let's imagine that you managed to um, show that there was a linear correlation using uh, the, the method of the, the, using the, the regression and you find with a 99% confidence level that there is a, a linear correlation. Now that still means there is a 1% chance that actually you got it wrong. So there is 1% chance that your result is just due to sheer luck with, uh, with random data that happens to give you the impression that there is a linear correlation when actually there isn't. So what, what's going to happen? What's going to happen in that case? Well, you're going to say, yeah, there is the improved focus. Look, look at my data, 99% confidence level. I can't be wrong, can it? And then, so those surveys that report the wrong results, let's imagine that 1% um, of all surveys those wrong results but if you've got 10,000 surveys a year this is still 100 surveys a year that happens to be you know, just wrong and so because they bring conclusive results they're going to be over reported compared to surveys that are inconclusive and that will probably be under reported so you get a, a massive bias towards things that are actually wrong so yeah my point was just that surveys are really it's really the last resort to investigate something. Ideally, you would want uh, a method that allows you to really see the impact on one particular individual of ingesting berries, for instance, and seeing exactly all the chemical pathways through your body for each and every cell of a duration of a few weeks to find out, to really find out exactly what happens. Uh, that's, uh, that's impractical, that doesn't, that doesn't even exist. So there you go. So the conclusion of all this is that any assertion that comes with a study from a survey, even if it's actually done really rigorously, applying rigorous statistical method, is still not that good.